The sun is the major source of heat and light for every creature on our planet. Its rays feed plants, warm the ground, turn glaciers into mountain rivers and move air masses around to create a refreshing breeze. Billions of kilometers away from us, other stars give heat to other planets, which are different from our Earth, quite in the same manner. But there are worlds out there that are completely independent from any star. Their sky will never be lit by sunrise, and their surfaces are shrouded in an eternal night. They are destined to billions of years of solitariness in the cold expanses of the cosmos, and only silvery clouds made up of finest ice needles, as it were, hang over the dark horizon. Assumptions about the existence of space objects the size of a planet, which are independent from any star, have been around for a long time. Such celestial objects, freely drifting around interstellar space, are referred to as orphan, free-floating or rogue planets. Astronomical bodies of this kind emit very little thermal and light energy into space around them. It is suggested that there are no bodies in their close proximity they could clearly interact with or be bound to. That is why it is hardly surprising that these objects are so difficult to detect. The first potential representatives of this class of planets were spotted as recently as in the early 21st century. The warmest rogue planets can be detected with infrared telescopes, and others thanks to something called the gravitational microlensing effect. As one would expect, this class of celestial objects is one of the most mysterious and understudied. Today, only three astronomical bodies can be classified as rogue planets with a sufficient degree of certainty, with the overall number of rogue planet candidates over two dozen. Incidentally, according to the analysis of data collected in the course of the Ogle project, the Milky Way may supposedly be home to up to a hundred billion objects of this class. This may only mean that right now, we're at the very beginning of an upcoming series of discoveries in this field. Our notions of what rogue planets are like have long been based purely on assumptions and hypotheses. With the technological advancement of highly sensitive observation equipment, there arose opportunities to put them to the test in practice. The rogue planet lying closest to the Earth among those already confirmed is known as WISE 0855-0714. 7.27 light-years away from the Sun, it was detected in 2014 with the WISE Orbital Infrared Telescope. The astronomical body cannot be seen through optical telescopes, as it emits no visible light to speak of. The reason for this is its extremely low temperature. From 225 to 260 Kelvin, or 48 to 13 degrees Celsius below zero. In terms of its parameters, it resembles a cooled-off gas giant, and its age cannot be under a billion years. The rogue planet is mostly made up of hydrogen. However, in 2016, the Gemini Observatory produced evidence of the presence of large amounts of water in its atmosphere. It is suggested that water is condensed into clouds made up of tiniest particles of ice. Today, it hasn't been established for certain how this object came to be. There are currently two versions suggested by researchers. According to the first one, a celestial object like that starts its life cycle in the protoplanetary disk of a regular planetary system. Mathematical modeling of this process shows that if the original cloud of gas and dust is heavy enough, it is highly likely that at least one planet will be ejected beyond the system. The celestial object may also be forced out of its star's environs if another massive star passes it by, or else if its planetary system collides with another system. The chances of events like that are admittedly comparatively small. The other version has it that the space object was born just like any other star on compression of interstellar gas. At the same time, the mass of the object proved to be too small to unleash any thermonuclear reactions in its interior. It goes without saying that in this manner, it may turn out only as a gas giant or a brown dwarf 
but not a rocky planet similar to the Earth. Some researchers don't agree that these objects should be seen as rogue planets and classify them as sub-brown dwarfs instead. Others suggest using the term Planemo for all interstellar wanderers that don't show any thermonuclear activity. Bearing in mind today's notions of the makeup of brown dwarfs and gas giants, we may estimate the mass of Y's 0855-0714 at anything from 3 to 10 Jupiter masses. This rather falls short of starting a thermonuclear reaction, but quite enough to keep the heat effectively trapped inside the planet. Taking into account our knowledge about natural laws, we can predict what the conditions on the astronomical body's surface are like. For example, according to research by David John Stevenson from the University of California in the US, gas giants similar to Jupiter don't cool off instantly after receding from their star. Their thick hydrogen atmosphere is quite reliable thermal isolation, while the dense and hot nucleus made up of metallic hydrogen can keep the planet heated for a considerable time. Estimates show that the temperature of the lowest strata of a hypothetical celestial object's atmosphere may be high enough for liquid water to be around. It is likely to be present in the atmosphere as giant clouds made up of tiniest droplets. These deductions agree with the results of mathematical modeling of Y's 0855-0714 carried out by a team of scientists from the University of Edinburgh. It showed that the most likely temperature value of the planet's surface is 250 Kelvin or 23 degrees Celsius below zero. The celestial body's atmosphere also has a comparatively warm layer around 100 kilometers thick whose density fluctuates from 0.4 to 1.2 milligrams per cubic centimeter. It is comparable with the conditions on the Earth and so it is thought that this environment should be favorable for potential organic life. Incidentally, a planet doesn't have to be a massive gas giant to avoid freezing in the cosmos. In 2020, a rogue planet candidate was detected using gravitational microlensing techniques. And here is the long designation it got. It is still awaiting confirmation of the rogue planet's status and its parameters have been defined only generally so far. According to preliminary data, however, the object is comparable to the Earth in terms of its mass and is anything from 30 to 180,000 light years away. According to our current scientific notions, an object with a mass like that is not supposed to be a gas giant and is more likely to be a rocky planet. This, in its turn, offers good grounds to believe that the object formed in the protoplanetary disk of a planetary system as the latter was forming. It may have been ejected from the system as a result of a cataclysm in space or alternatively, under the influence of a larger neighbor. After that, it was left to its own devices and so became a free-floating planet. What will happen to it next is predefined by a combination of several factors. Provided the object's atmosphere is sufficiently dense, it will be reliably thermally isolated. Potentially, a layer of ice on its surface could produce the same isolating effect. In addition, with the object's interior scorching hot and with radioactive elements undergoing decay, most of the hypothetical ocean will remain in a liquid state. If the planet happened to have a moon, it may have retained it on ejection. If this is the case, tidal forces are likely to continue to deform and warm up the lithosphere. Theoretically, with any luck, primitive anaerobic life forms may have stayed around although, of course, it would be next to impossible to discover their traces now. Most of the data about the rogue planets we know today were arrived at following mathematical modeling and complex calculations. It was possible to do these calculations thanks to the tiniest bits of information gleaned with the help of orbital and Earth-based telescopes. Even as I speak, a project is being worked on known as Cleopatra. Its main objective will be to search for free-floating planets and other objects in space with subsequent definition of their parameters. The project relies on something called microlensing. It is a phenomenon when a celestial body passes between a remote star and the observer on the Earth and briefly interferes with the light emitted by the remote star in the background. 
When observed from different angles, the moment of transition will be registered a fraction of a second sooner in one observatory than in another. Referred to as lensing parallax, this effect allows scientists to gauge the distance to a detected object, as well as its mass and dimensions. An interplanetary spacecraft is planned to be created within the project. It is supposed to blast off the surface of the Earth as soon as in 2025 alongside a mission to Mars, after which it will enter its own orbit around the Sun. The project will be aided by a specialized artificial intelligence component, whose mission will be to process and analyze collected information. The Cleopatra project will certainly delight us with a wealth of exciting and important information, so there is a lot to look forward to. What is to become of all those rogue worlds out there? Drifting quite by themselves in the dark depths of the universe. In theory, an orphan planet may be captured by the gravitational field of a star and become part of its planetary system, but this chance is by all accounts minuscule. Most objects like that are destined to wander for billions of years through endless expanses of space while slowly and inevitably cooling off. Eventually, they are to be swallowed up by black holes or else destroyed as a result of a cataclysm in space, never to reveal their secrets to mankind.